All right, let's talk about these batteries. These things are pretty amazing. These are the scooter batteries that are uh, Jack 35 right now. There are a ton of these, uh, I don't know, thousands in the thousands. And the cool thing about them is that they have some of the best cells that I've seen. These are LG MH1 cells. These are 3,200 milliamp hours. These are pretty good cells. They're energy dense cells, right? Not power dense, right? So they are, they hold, I mean, you know, 3.2 amp hours each, right? And they come in this uh, package here that goes on some kind of scooter and they have a built-in BMS and it's a 10S, uh, 10S 4P, I think that's the configuration, right? So it's 10S 36 volt thing, which is a weird voltage. And so it's kind of weird to try to use them as is. Now there are ways to do that and I will show you in a different video, but on this initial video, what I wanna show you how to do is how you can buy them and how to take them apart. These things actually come apart very easily. And it allows you to, uh, well, salvage or reclaim 40 cells. This is a 40 uh, cell pack, 40 cells that are pretty clean. This is about the only glue that you will have on them. It's a piece of paper that went around this, right? To, I don't know, to, to shield the cells or just to cover the cells or whatever. Pretty much uh, this and this are not glued in here like most of these battery packs. And so as a result of that, you end up with pretty clean cells that you can uh, test, put them in your testers and stuff, and then eventually then configure into your own pack for you to serve your own purposes, right? So let's, let me show you how to take one of these apart, right? Uh, here we go. Just for you guys that were asking to show you guys the BMS. This is the BMS that's on board. And you will receive these with these wires cut like that. Unfortunately, that's part of the contract uh, that was signed to be able to sell these to the public or, you know, to sell these. Uh, yeah, they have to be cut, the connectors have to be cut so that they don't end up being used for the original purpose, right? And so we have to use them for a different purpose. And that's okay because, you know, we are want to build DIY power walls. We want to build our own e-bikes or whatever else that you want to do, not use them in the original in the device that these came from. So, um, yes, let's uh, take it apart. Let me show you a uh, way to take it apart and then uh, how to uh, process the cells and stuff. Okay, so after you cut the little wires that go uh, here, connecting the one side of the pack to the next one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start cutting these guys in there, right? So these are, there we go, Good up these. Okay, I think, yeah. And then after that, then you can totally remove this guy. So then you just bend it back and forth. And then hopefully, oh, okay. So what we can do is just cut this guy in here. There we go. Just cut that in there. There's a big old uh, trace in there. Let's lift this guy out of the way. Here we go, you see it right there? Yeah, so then you just cut that, right? Cut that. This, all right, and then you just remove the BMS. You see that? The BMS is out of the way now, so then you can remove this and then you have access to the cells now. So let's see how we can remove this. Can we do that? I'm gonna use these guys. Let's see if we can remove it. 
Oh yeah, look at that. You could like literally use that to to pry the the things. You see that? Boom, that just comes right off. First, right? So then here it is. Let's see. There we go. go so if you have you just remove the center here then the rest will be much easier here we go okay we just we just did that whole side already so let's flip it around the other way Let's take away this. So same thing, you just uh, pry here. Look at that, and it just comes right off. Right, you're almost done here. Now you should be able to separate this thing here. Oh. There, I think there are screws. Yes. And look at that. They just come apart. All the cells are there. 40 cells ready to go. They still have obviously the, uh, this stuff, right? So you'll have to remove that, but I mean, that's, that's pretty simple to do, you know? You just have to, boom. Yeah, just like that. All right, now they are all clean, right? Ready to be put on the tester. Uh, and just run them through one cycle. Now, one thing I wanna tell you about is the fact that these holders are pretty nice. And uh, yeah, you could totally reuse them. Um, like I said, these are originally 10S, which is not very, the most useful uh, voltage to use them, right? But let's say that we were to look at another way, right? Let's say that instead of uh, being a 10S 4P, let's say that we can do 3P, right? So three cells in parallel. So one, two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then one, two, three, thirteen. So if you remove one, then you can have a 13S uh 3p 13s 3p right and if you do that then this all of a sudden becomes a uh a 48 volt pack right and you just put this back in here and there we go then uh you know you just do the things in here although now it's a little bit different here uh we'll figure it out we'll figure out how to do this uh i'll make a video showing you how to Use the packs as they are, use the packs, reconfigure for a 13S uh, or reconfigure to a 7S. I'll also try to do a 7S, but there are ways to reuse all of this stuff because this is really great. Another one, another way that you could also do it is uh, just leave them all 40 cells and all positives and all negatives to the same side, right? So then you make one big, one big, battery pack right with 40 cells and then you either get seven of these in a row and then connect them or get uh 13 or 14 of them for a 48 volt right so that's also a possibility there is a lot of uh options here with these guys and it's totally worth it because these cells are so good uh the best that I've seen come up yet in our, uh, you know, reclaimed stuff, right? So there you go. This is how you would use it. 
Now let's just go put them on the uh, chargers so that we can test the capacity. All right, here is my wall of chargers that I use. I use the little Kala engineer or the sand flare. I think all these are sold out or out of production. I think you can still get the light of Kalas, but maybe not the sand flares. Uh, I will put a link to whatever, whichever one's available on the end of this video. But here's what you do. You basically go in here, load it up, do the next one, do the next one. Then the next one and these i really like them because all i have to do is i have to disconnect it boom and then press this button twice and then it becomes a norm test normal test and that's what it's gonna do is gonna discharge them and charge them it's gonna charge it up and then discharge it all the way down and then it's gonna record the capacity and internal resistance right and it'll it'll run that one cycle and then it'll charge it right back up ready to have all of them charge at the top so that when you build your pack, they're all balanced, right? So now let's finish doing the rest of them here and then to see what they come up with. All right, here we go. It's about 10 hours later. Let's go check out on those batteries and see how they're doing. All right, here we go. They're still charging, but they have discharge already, so we can see the capacities. 33, 41, 34, 03, 33, 14. Yeah, so 33, 32, 34, 33. And I know what you guys are saying. How can these be 33, 34 when these are 3,200 milliamp hours? Well, the reason is because these uh, chargers here are probably not the most... Um, reliable or the most accurate right but it doesn't really matter all you have to know is that they're okay right uh that the, the, there's not one cell that is significantly different than all the other ones right if they're all around 33 34 then that's okay these are all match cells and you can use them for your own projects right now are these really 3300 milliamp hours or is it more closely to 3200 milliamp hours like these are when they're brand new well uh you know there's also the other reason is because this also discharges at one at half a c no half a c no half an amp which is way less than half a c it's probably like 0.2 c or something like that. so they're they're being discharged and tested at a lower rate than the spec sheet did right? you know the factory did and so that's why they will yield a slightly larger number right which means all of this means is that if you have a 3300 3200 to 3400 milliamp hours on one of these it means that these cells are yielding still like 99 percent of their original capacity right these are used cells i can't guarantee that every single pack that you're gonna buy they're like this but uh this is just a random pack that we took from the from the you know from the truckload that that is coming in and we're testing a few of them and if they're all coming close to that then that's what we're advertising so i can't guarantee that you're gonna get 100 percent the same results here but uh rest assured that we're testing a few packs here and there and and they're they're coming out really really good so so there you go from here these are once these charge back up then you can use them and you can you can build your own battery packs in any way you want so there you go lg mh1 packs it's never been a better time to be working on batteries with batteries because there are so many batteries out there of such high quality and at low prices right so it's exciting times if you're getting into batteries there you go go build something good and do share with us in our facebook group jehu's uh, DIY power walls on Facebook. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. I've got to